in accordance with 940 CMR 29.10 remote participation adopted by the Greater Lowell Technical School Committee April 17, 2014. Committeeman O'Hare and Committeeman LeMay will be participating at tonight's meeting remotely. No in-person attendance of members will be participating. The public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings as provided for in the governor's order. Individuals that would like to have access should join by calling 1-650-667-2644 when prompted. Enter the PIN, 830-340-138-POUND. Mm -hmm. Rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic of the Republic, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Mr. Giggy? Here. Mr. Gitchia? Yeah. Mr. Sheehan? Yeah. Mr. Bahu? Yeah. Mr. O'Hia? Yeah. Mr. Tatsias? Yeah. Mr. LeMay? Mr. LeMay here. Mr. Mormon? Yeah. <coughs> Can I have a motion to open the public hearing? So moved. Second. Roll call. Mr. LeMay? Yes. Mr. Gigi. Yes. Mr. Gitchia. Yes. Mr. Sheehan. Yes. Mr. Bahu. Here. Mr. Ohia. Yes. Mr. Tatsias. Yes. Mr. Morin. Yeah. Brief overview of fiscal 22 budget by the Superintendent Davis and the School Business Administrator. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to begin by evening by uh, stating that the FY22 proposed budget uh, presentation was influenced by the governor's most recent budget proposal and data and input from administrators, teachers, parents, and community partners and centered around improving student achievement in order to develop confident learners and skilled workers. One of the big, biggest impacts to this year's FY22 proposed budget was the Student Opportunity Act. Uh, this, was no, this bill was signed in by the governor last year to boost investment in public schools by $1.5 billion over the next seven years. The bill was aimed at uh, tackling inequity specifically for school districts with higher percentages of low-income students, English language learners, Asian and special education students in order to close the achievement gap. 80% of the funds went to 35 districts and Greater Lowell Technical High School was one of those districts. We received 2.1%. $2,173,777 increase in Chapter 78 uh, this year and a minimum of $1,158,446,000,000 uh, were required to be spent on addressing closing the achievement gaps for low-income students, English language learners, special education, and our Asian subgroups. The governor's house budget uh, proposed is a direct result of the revised foundation budget formula, which reflects an increased per pupil expenditure to add additional funding to schools with higher numbers of English language learners, special education students, and low income students. The base rate for a vocational student was raised to $14,942.95, as you can see uh, on the first line of this slide, which was an increase of $285.15. For a special education student, we received $28,145.55, which is a $404.53 increase. Uh, currently, we are at 17.3% uh, of special education students. 
For English language learners, we received $2,129.82, which is an increase of $237.40. And currently, we have 218 students, which is approximately 10% of our student population. <coughs> Low-income categories were added in FY21 that did not exist before and are being maintained in FY22. We have a 60% low-income percentage and therefore our students fall in Category 10, for which we receive $5,108.63, which is an additional increase of $427.80. Additionally, in FY21, the qualification to be counted as low income changed from a ceiling of earning 133% of the federal po poverty level to earning 185% of the, of the federal po uh, poverty level. Those changes in the foundation budget formula are what drove the increase to our budget in this year. Um, so our foundation budget, because of those changes to the formula and the additional 21 students that we have enrolled this year over last year, um, increased the foundation budget overall by $2,780,955, or about 6.22%. Um, from that, the state was able to determine that the required contribution for our member communities um, would increase by $446,335. And the difference between the increase in what was required to be paid by our communities is then made up by Chapter 70, which was increased by two million one hundred and seventy-three thousand dollars and seven or two million one hundred and seventy-three thousand seven hundred and seventy-seven dollars, uh, or about seven point three five percent increase. <clears throat> and this all carries down as well to our required net school spending, so that every additional dollar that we receive will actually be spent on educational value uh, for the students that attend Greater Wall Tech. When we look at the total revenue for the projected 2022 year, um, you'll see the increases to, um, a, uh, or a decrease in the use of excess and deficiency for the year from 300,000 to 200,000, which we'll cover at the end of the presentation. Um, you can see that for the majority of our member communities, the assessments are decreased um, with the exception of Lowell, and that has a lot to do with a, a change, or not necessarily a change in our enrollment, but a change in where our enrollment came from, um, where Lowell had a higher number of students this year, um, and most of the other towns saw a decrease, whether it be modest or um, a little more significant. Um, so even though we are seeing a, a quite a significant increase in the budget and things like transportation and other costs do increase, um, for the most of our member communities, they won't see that increase. Um, additionally, something that's not displayed here and was a little bit of a change from the first time we talked about the budget with the Finance Committee to this meeting was um, the assessment to Lowell <clears throat> also um, has in the, the um, student, op or not the student opportunity, the um, COVID Relief Act that was passed in December. They issued a set amount of money to municipalities and schools within the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And in part in doing that, they allowed for an offset to the assessment to their member communities by the increase of their minimum local contribution. So this doesn't affect the majority of our, our member communities because they aren't seeing an increase. Um, but for the city of Lowell, um, what we've sent to their town um, CFO, um, Mr. Connor Baldwin, um, we sent a letter explaining how the process of this works. And if the provision for the use of these funds to decrease their assessment carries through the final rounds of the budget, um, what will happen is the city of Lowell will be able to take a vote and access uh, a, a decrease in their um, assessment um, to the tune of, I believe it was 500 Five hundred and thirty or five hundred and seventy thousand dollars off the top of my head, um, but we we presented that figure and they'll just have to make a vote and tell us as soon as they can um, once the budget is complete if that provision carries forward. Um, in the first round that we showed this budget, we included that decrease because we weren't clear on how that was going to um, take effect and what type of action was going to be required with that. But since that time. Um, the Department of Ed and the state have come out and said that they really want to see an affirmative vote 
from the community with an acknowledgement that it's a one-year reduction. So that if the reduction is taken, you, that's fine for next year, but assume that the year beyond that, there'll be that 500 plus whatever in other increase comes with it. Um, so I think they're really pushing for that affirmative vote just so that they can be sure that everyone understands it's a one-time use, it's a one-time thing, and that that increase comes the following year. I have a question about that. Sure. So doing a one-time, does, does that mean that they have to pay, if, if they choose to take this affirmative vote, would they have to pay the state back that extra $500,000, or does that no. mean that they just have that one-time provision? No, it's just a one-time reduction Lower for cost. them. Yeah, it doesn't affect our spending or anything. It really just affects where our revenue comes from. Um, so our budget set either way doesn't really affect our budget, but the majority of our budget is spent on recurring costs. So, um, and we only assess at the minimum local requirement for net school spending. Um, so there's, this, it's going to feel like a very real and, and potentially a very large increase. You can see this year. It's 800,000. So if they take that decrease this year and there's another 800,000 next year, they're going to be looking at more like a $1.3 million increase on a year over year basis, which if they're not prepared for something like that and they didn't take the vote and understand that it's the one time use, that can be um, a, bi a big budget buster for them, I'm sure. Um, so beyond that, the revenue comes from um, that increase to the Chapter 70 formula. Um, transportation looks like it's going to be roughly flat um, based on the first round of the budget um, and then that rounds out to our total budget dollar figure of fifty million two hundred fifty eight thousand five hundred and forty six dollars I had a question sure uh, are you basically saying that most municipalities across the Commonwealth were all treated differently compared to the towns? Or was this... What did, what did you feel? With, uh, was there a big disparity, disparity relative to... Uh, every, everyone was afforded the same opportunity on the municipality end versus the towns? The increase? Um, I'm not sure I completely understand the question, but the, the increase um, was really more of a function of enrollment than anything else to the city of Lowell. Um, it just so happened that I think in, in this year and in, in, in the budget book, if you look at the enrollment tab, which is number nine, um, and you look at what made up the enrollment, which towns were up, which towns were down, um, what we found was that yeah. the city of the city of Lowell had about a 60 student in, or 59 student increase on a year over year basis for us. Um, and Drake, it being our second largest municipality, actually had a 30 student decrease. Um, and then Dunstable had a three student decrease, and Tingsboro had a three student decrease or five student decrease. Um, so when you look at those decreases as a percentage of their total enrollment, um, you know, there was significant decreases across the board with the exception of the city of Lowell. Um, and then the, the way the funding gets, uh, or the, uh, the assessment gets uh, appropriated across that is very much a, a student for student dollar figure, pretty much so. When you see an increase of 60 students out of you know, 1,600 that, or 1,700 that come from a, a single municipality, you can expect a pretty good increase um, to that end. Um, now with the ESSER portion that helps to reduce the funding um, potentially for those schools that are increased, um, it, it all depends. It all depends on um, the individual schools and where they stand currently. So a lot of municipalities might not see a, a very great benefit from that that provision in the law that allows for the offset and the increase in minimum local contribution. Um, and that's and that has to do with a lot of the schools in the state of Massachusetts. Actually, we're we're in the vast minority. I think of probably about ten school districts that only assess at net school spending or minimum local contribution. Um, I think the last time I heard the state average, it was roughly about 24% above that number is where most schools operate. Um, we're in a, uh, I guess, a fortuitous situation that we're able to operate and operate well um, under the minimum local contribution. Um, but for many of those other municipalities, if you're already 24% above the minimum, um, there's really not much to decrease for you, um, even if you got additional funding for offsetting the increase. So I've heard 
Um, a number of different strategies going on with that. Some are, you know, allowing for a decrease in assessment on a single year basis. Others are sort of using that as a secondary um, means of um, additional supports for um, social emotional learning and, and other areas that may have been impacted by the pandemic and saying, let's you know, beef up XYZ for a year or two, and we can use that decrease to help fund that. Um, so it, it all depends, but I think, um, you know, every municipality is in a, in a very different situation. It's not to be a number of factors involved, but uh, I'm, I'm satisfied with that. I thank you for your time. You're welcome. Thank you. So the budget priorities for FY22 were focused on allocating staffing driven by the need to maintain support in both our academic core classes and our technical programs to address the persistent achievement gap. Uh, keeping class size manageable and providing a full course of offerings uh, from CP, Honors, AP, and our dual enrollment courses. Supporting uh, inclusion and high expectations for all students creating more uh, teacher-student uh, effective ratios by increasing staff, which enables additional course selections, sections, and decreasing class size. Improving the social-emotional well-being of our students, providing PD and coaching to staff to meet the needs of our diverse learners, technical equipment purchases to ensure high levels of instruction and authentic learning experiences, and keeping current with industry trends to prepare our students for the competitive workforce upon graduation, and supporting educational equity and opportunity for all. When we look at the proposed expenditure for the budget for FY22, um, it's no surprise that with all this, the conversation around achieve, or closing the achievement gap and improving student outcomes, um, that the majority or the biggest in, or the second biggest increase we can see in any account or uh, spending um, grouping is is in the instructional spending, where the majority of the funding for the um, Student Opportunity Act is focused. Um, another one that's a little bit, uh, I guess, misleading on this chart is the fixed charges increase. Um, and that's because last year at the end of the year, um, we had significant savings from um, the COVID shutdown and the pandemic in that period of March to June last year where um, everyone was still kind of figuring out remote learning and all of those pieces. Um, so because we fell below net school spending, what we were able to do was roll over some of the funding from last year into this year in order to pay our Middlesex County assessment bill right from last year's money. So we didn't have it in the budget for the FY2021 year, uh, and that's about a $1.6 million charge. So that increase of 1.7 is really just about putting that back into the budget where we were able to use it elsewhere within this year. Um, and, and then other than that, we're, um, we'll talk about some of the other increases and in the, the categorical increases on the next couple slides. So some of the other notable expenditures, um, health insurance is always one that tends to increase on a year-over-year -year basis greater than uh, the funding that comes in for it. Uh, so we saw about a $338,000 increase in our health and dental costs projected for next year. Um, our retirement system assessment, which I talked about getting added back to the budget, increases on a year-over-year -year basis of $146,000. Um, we have some professional development and contracted services around improving the efficiency and efficacy of teachers um, in the uh, Student Opportunity Act funding for $96,000. Um, and then we're also taking on a big project of replacing all of the um, instructional materials in the HVAC program. And um, we've got uh, roughly a $500,000 cost to revamp that entire shop and bring it up to speed with um, the latest and greatest in um, simulation software and labs and um, troubleshooting simulations. It um, sounds like it's going to be a pretty awesome upgrade. Sure. Just a quick question. On the $338,000 increase on the health and dental insurance, over how many employees was that dispersed? If you know, you may not. I don't know. I don't have the exact off the top of my head. Um, 
trying to think back to the last trust meeting because we do go over enrollment a little bit. Um, between all of the schools in the trust, I think it's um, I think we were close to 700 subscribers. Greater Lowell being the largest. Um, I don't I don't have a number off the top of my head. I I would guess that we're probably at least 300 of the subscribers out of that group, possibly more. So that's about a hundred dollars per subscriber, or a little bit more. A uh, thousand per. A thousand? Yeah, a thousand. Roughly, yeah. That's a pretty hefty increase. Yeah. Yep. Um, when, when it breaks down, it was roughly, um, we had about a 5%, if you kind of washed it across the board, 5% increase on a year-over-year -year basis on health insurance. Um, not outrageous. I've been, I've, I've lived through years where it was 12, 15%, which, which is tough. Um, putting the five on there wasn't so bad this year. Um, obviously it does does affect everyone's pay and their take home, but um, I've, I've seen a lot worse. So uh, personnel expenditures, uh, these expenditures will allow for uh, program improvements, high level instruction and interventions based on increased enrollment and increased student needs and services to address uh, the skills learning gap. Uh, beginning with the positions that are lift, listed on the top half of the slide. Most of these positions were included in our SOA uh, presentation and are part of the SOA uh, funding. Uh, special education instructor and paraprofessional to improve programs and services for our special education students and to allow our students with disabilities to be educated in the least restrictive environment inclusion co-taught classes, and adding additional special education, uh, ELA and math, our certified staff will provide more support and decrease the number of students in each inclusion classroom, uh, specifically the general ed and SPED ratios in inclusion classrooms. Uh, the addition of an adjustment council to support the social, emotional, and behavioral needs of our students with disabilities, an ELA, ELE, English Language Education Teacher, and an ELE Para to address increased numbers and needs of our English language learners. Uh, tutors to provide uh, small group individual interventions to improve literacy and math skills, specifically for those subgroups that we talked about earlier, the, the English language learners, the special education, the low income, and our Asian students. Uh, a Title I reading instructor to provide targeted reading and writing assistance to more students to close the gaps. Uh, a literacy action team uh, to improve literacy across the curricula, supporting teachers, uh, instructing students with speaking, listening, reading, and writing. Uh, two after dark powers to support the increase in, in programs next year. Uh, we are going to be adding auto collision to uh, the after dark program. A school counselor to reduce caseloads uh, of our school counselors so they can focus on college and career planning, providing supports and resources, and ensuring the social emotional well being of, of our students. Uh, AP, an additional assistant principal to support our main office to reduce caseloads and allow our assistant principals to be more visible and spend times in classrooms in order to build relationships with students and to support in instructors with classroom management and behavioral interventions. Uh, credit recovery uh, to reduce course failures, dropouts before and after school, as well as boot camps and other interventions to address the skills gap. Uh, and now I think we're moving, I'm sorry, we are down below. These positions would actually be coming from the LEA budget. The positions above were, were coming from the SOA portion uh, of the budget. Uh, next is the cosmetology instructor. Uh, adding an additional instructor, uh, the mass cosmetology state compliance requires two licensed instructors per the first 25 students with an additional teacher for each 25 students thereafter. Currently there are 64 students in the program 
And each week when you add exploratory into that, it becomes 96 in the shop. This instructor would allow us to add an additional seat and enhance curriculum to add additional competencies and advanced training in the areas of aesthetics, manicuring, and nail enhancements, chemical hair relaxers, and multicultural mannequins, as well as eyelash perming and tinting. Painting and design are uh, a vocational para. This person would allow for live work to be done during the school day to take small groups out to do work around the building. And this para would initially be uh, responsible for supporting painting and design, but if uh, this para needed to support other uh, vocational programs, they would be doing so as well. Uh, Athletics, we're going to be adding a field hockey as a new sport for J and we're going to need JV and varsity coaches. Uh, the last request is uh, for our technical database assistant to have a salary adjustment. Uh, this individual uh, has new responsibilities since uh, the individual was uh, hired and there was a title change as well to a database website technical assistant, and uh, which there has been no compensa compensation for. This individual has been with us for the past six years and uh, worked in this position uh, as a co-op student, was hired by us, and is an alumni of the school. And those are our uh, personnel expenditures for the 21 school year, 21-22 school year. All right, and then we are planning to use some excess and deficiency in this budget to the tune of $200,000. Um, 100,000 of those dollars will be focused on costs that aren't eligible for um, to be counted for net school spending or educational spending as the state deemed. Um, and some of those are listed below here. The um, contract we have with UMass Medical to help with our Medicaid billing and filing, um, as well as capital repair on vehicles and equipment, um, generally don't, doesn't qualify for net school spending. So between those two costs and then uh, inevitably there'll be something that comes up throughout the year, whether it be a piece of equipment or something along those lines that might not qualify that will bring us up to that additional hundred. Um, the second hundred thousand would be to continue to contribute to the OPEB or the other other pension and liabilities fund uh, for the school district, which was established, I believe, three years ago now. Um, and just to continue on with that as we have in the past. After the first meeting, it was asked about OPEB and the effect on the credit rating, which is kind of the, the driver behind a lot of the reason that people address this um, outstanding liability. Um, so our outstanding liability is 50 million roughly. <laughs> Um, so throwing 100000 here and there at it isn't really making much of a dent. Um, when I looked at the credit report that we had, our most recent from the S&P, um, they gave us a, an A plus or a double A negative um, rating. And the rating was centered a lot around the um, S&P, I guess, didn't necessarily believe that the municipalities were in uh, a particularly strong financial position, the ones that feed their students here. Um, so they thought that there was a potential that um, eventually they might not be able to pay their obligation and because we're beholden to them, um, that sort of trickles down as a negative outlook. Um, and then outside of that, they did say that one of the things that they wanted to address was um, long-range management planning. Um, so that's usually where they put this OPEB fund into is um, they like to see a municipality clearly define that you know, even though we recognize that we're talking about $50 million, um, what we feel the best we can do is, you know, $100,000 a year for the next, whatever, 5 million years um, to get there because it'll continue to increase as we go. Um, now, that's probably not a great long-range plan, um, but that's the type of thing that they're looking for for that long-term stability and long-term planning, whether it be, um, you know, defined as a, as a particular dollar figure and or if we said, you know, any amount above, you know, 3.5% in excess and deficiency gets contributed or um, coming up with some sort of a, a longer range financial plan to that end. Um, so those were the, the big negatives in the report. 
Um, and that's, you know, I guess the case to be made for continuing with the OPEV, at least it's a sign that we, there's an acknowledgement that we know this thing's hanging out there. Um, now, I don't think we have a plan to get the 50 million by any means, but it's, um, I guess, the step in the right direction. Can we acknowledge it in a, uh, in a, with a lesser amount to have um, monies go back towards our students and their um, education? Would that, would that be a detriment to our uh, rating? Um, they, so they don't have like a clean formula. I'll say there's nothing that says that if you're contributing X percent, you get, you know, kicked up to from a double A minus to a double A or double A plus. Um, so they haven't gotten that technical with it or that defined. Um, so I, I can't say with any def with any definitive nature, you know, that 10,000 makes a difference from 100,000 makes a difference from 50,000. Um, they just really haven't put a solid formula in place to say this is what we're looking for or this is how we want to see it um, the comments in the the rating were really centered around you know give us a long-range plan and prove the financial stability in, in all your members it I, I guess the, it begs the question do all schools fall under like a double a minus uh, they do not so there's some that are better um, so I, I can't tell I don't I actually don't know for sure to be honest um, my assumption in reading this was that they do it on a case-by-case -case basis so they're not blanketing you know municipalities are all double A's and maybe you could be a double A plus maybe you could be a double A minus um, I didn't get that sense but I, I don't know for sure so from what I heard from you is that it's based on the community and their uh, our feeding communities and their budgets and their ability to meet their obligations. That's how we got to the minus, I guess. And then from there, um, you really don't understand how they, or you don't know how the formula is skewed to the negative based on OPEC. That's correct. So, and I guess what I heard from Fred is that, is there a minimum percentage of the entire budget that would keep us at or above and is there a way that we can kind of figure that out and you may not be able to i don't know so i, I reached it's, a, it's subjective i think yeah it is a bit subjective and i think that's what i'm struggling with is uh, if they gave me a formula i'd be much happier to be able to explain you know this amount gets us here this amount gets us there type of thing um, and even speaking with the lending agency that we generally use, Hilltop Financial, or who we've used in the past, who had the credit information, um, they didn't. They didn't. They said to me, you know, there's no hard formula. It's really just about they do an overall holistic kind of look at everything, and then they assign based on that. Um, so I can't. Uh, hate to hate to be non-concrete, but I really can't commit that um, it, it'll go up or down based on this move. It's um it's just the way the way they're the way it is at the moment i think with opeb that they don't have the clear definition of when they want to make it do how they want to change it and, and i think part of that's visible in um, even the government accounting standards board changing from two years ago from how they valued everything um, i'm sure two years ago it was probably a 30 million dollar uh, liability and then they changed and they reduced the time to pay back from a 15-year valuation to like a seven-year valuation or something like that so everyone's liability doubled overnight um now you know, what's that what's that actually mean on a balance sheet it makes us look terrible um uninvestable even if you're if it was private sector um but being public it's um i think they're still working through how this should be used as an effect and how it should be counted against a municipality about five years ago, we were asked to adopt OPEB, and we did. We acknowledged that it needed to be, as other municipalities did. Some went ahead and funded it. Others um, have chosen not to because yep. they, they can't necessarily afford to. We've been funding it ever since we've um, adopted it. Um, and we put in about $600,000, if I recall, um, to this. And um, we've clearly acknowledged it. And I'm just curious if we could just um, uh, give them less 
um, acknowledge it in a lower cost and be able to have that money available to our students, for wh whether it be tutoring or whether it be paraprofessionals or whether it be something that they can go ahead and grasp onto to better their uh, career. I'm, I'm trying to think of the students here, sure. and as long as it doesn't hurt our rating, um, I don't see a, a reason not to decrease this funding. Yeah, I mean, I, I again, I can't say it won't decrease the rating. I can't say it won't will increase the rating. I, I really don't have a grasp on that, and I couldn't gather that in the time from the last meeting to this one. Um, I, I can say that if we're talking about redirecting for the students, um, I think when we went through our budget meetings, we took everyone's wish list, we took the capital plan, um, and we granted there was nothing cut across the board. Everything that was asked for, that was brought to a meeting, that was brought to the table, has been added. I, uh, I think I don't think there was anything that we pulled back in, on at all. Um, so I. I, I don't know where we would go with the with the money. Well, I know we need a that's... new track out there that has sort of ruts in it and holes, and I don't know that we have funding to go ahead and um, um, keep people safe when they're running here at Greater Lowell Tech or on the track. I, I have a thought, and I don't know the if, if, how well the exceed would be, but if you take a look at the educational institutions, because all of these budgets are public at some point, so we should be able to look at other vocational schools that have funded OPEP. And I would think we'd want to be in the top one third to maintain our rating. So if we're consistently in the top one third of other similar institutions or similar budget educational facilities, I would think that's about where we need to be. And then anything that's over and above that, maybe we can redistribute into a different area. But I would think you'd want to stay in the top one third or thereabouts sure. to kind of maintain our a rating, if there's no formula, we create our own formula then based on similar budgets or similar institutions and we can go back to our, I guess, the people that oversee all of this to ensure that, you know, we're doing the best. We're in the top one third of the, the state. And I'm sure we are, but I yeah. don't know that for a fact. I just know there's other school districts that aren't necessarily funding this even though they've acknowledged that it's sort of sitting um, uh, on their backs. Because it's a huge liability. It's something that is eventually going to be addressed. But like the banking institutions and that, they're not going to allow something that big to ever fail. Mm -hmm. uh, at least that's my opinion based on history. Sure. So, uh, again, in order to maintain a favorable rating, because if we ever need to borrow funds, we want to be at a, a, a pretty good location on mm -hmm. the, the rating scale. And I would think as long as we can support being in the top third and just being in it is good enough and then anything else left over, if we can redistribute to the track or something else, that may be a suggestion because you're saying there's no set formula. N nothing that I, I found or that the lending agency that we use could tell me. Hmm. Mike, are you comfortable with $100,000 this year? You're going to build that. I'm comfortable with it, yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, so what I'm hearing is we're going to look into this for next year's budget sure. and have a real deep answer yep. to see if we really are on that one-third. Give us that great uh, bond rating so that we can borrow money uh, for future years, um, but make sure that our students always have what is needed uh, for their education uh, and to graduate them and then have them workplace ready. Is that fair? I think that's fair. Okay, Absolutely. thank you for addressing that. Thank yep. you. For me. <laughs> Lastly, in summary, the FY22 operating budget of uh, $46,353,451 uh, exceeds the required net school spending amount of $46,000,000. $253,451 by $100,000 uh, from E and excess and deficiency to cover non uh, net school spending eligible expenses. Therefore, our current operating budget, uh, which must be spent on net school spending, is $46,253,000. Uh, our transportation costs, our debt service, 
OPED uh, is open right now uh, until we can uh, get back to you with the answer to your question. Leaving a total budget of, which is unable to be answered right now, leaving OPEG. OPEG. Well, OPEG. why don't we just leave OPEG for 100000 this year and then... Oh, Look you're saying for the FY 23. Are you well, saying for 22 year, or 23? Then we can identify, you know, for if 20 we are in that recommendation of the top third that my fellow school committee men um, recommended. And okay, so for clarification, idea, 23 you were talking about. That's there. correct. Okay. Okay, so going back to OPEB with $100,000 for a total budget of $50,258,546. Uh, our FY22 revenue source is sufficient to sustain our proposed budget with the total, total minimum local contribution of $14,497,000, $120 uh, for cities and towns. Uh, our transportation assessment of one million four hundred and fifty six dollars four hundred and fifty six thousand one hundred and five dollars uh, our debt assessment of one million three hundred and sixty four thousand ninety four dollars for a total assessment of uh, sixteen million eight hundred and forty five thousand seven hundred and nine odd uh, dollars amongst our four towns uh, our chapter 78 of 31,756,332 with our ch chapter 71 transportation aid of 1,456,505 our x our excess and deficiency of $200,000 leaving us with a total budget of 50,258,546 dollars for the FY22 school year. Motion to approve. Uh, are there any public uh, participants wishing to speak? Do we know? Okay. Uh, a vote on the preliminary Fiscal 22 budget will take place during the regular school committee meeting at 6.30. Can I have a motion to close the public hearing? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Roll call. Mr. LeMay? Yes. Mr. Gigi? Yes. Mr. Gitchin? Yes. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Mr. Basel? Yes. Mr. O'Hare? Yes. Mr. Tatsias? Yes. Mr. Moran. Yes. With uh, 940 CMR 29.10, remote participation adopted by the Greater Law Technical School Committee, April 17, 2014. Committeeman O'Hare, Committeeman LeMay, and Student Representative Karen Vinyl will be participating at tonight's meeting remotely. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted. Please rise for the pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the free republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Mr. LeMay? Mr. Yeah. Mr. Gigi? Yes. Mr. Gitchia? Yes. Mr. Sheehan? Yes. Mr. Bahu? Yep. Mr. O'Hare? Yes. Mr. Tatsis? Yes. Mr. Morin? Yes. We're going to be suspending the public appearance portion and going right into the meeting. Uh, school committee communications. Report of the student representative. Karen, are you here? Yep. You're on, kid. Organization. Go ahead. Skills USA competed in the annual District 4 competition on March 11th, 2021. This year, the event was conducted remotely using a computerized testing platform with students testing from school or home, depending on their person status. 131 students competed in the district event. 
and we are excited to announce that 53 students earned medals for their performance and 37 students qualified to move on to the Skills USA Massachusetts State Leadership and Skills Conference being held in April. We also swept the competition in aesthetic, painting, and design technology. These results are a true testimony to the dedication of our students and staff during these unprecedented times of teaching and learning during hybrid and remote phases. Skills USA would like to thank all of you for your support of Skills USA and commitment to our students. The Anime Club has been focusing on the culture of Japan using the Travel Channel featuring Sue Perkins in Japan. The club members voted on what aspects of Japanese life and culture they were interested in and wanted to learn more about. Some of the topics chosen included sumo wrestling, artificial intelligence, islands outside of Tokyo, and sensuism. The Bible Club members explored the scripture as it relates to forgiveness, patience, and tolerance. Members shared their beliefs about those topics and how they had each encountered and dealt with these aspects in their lives. Peer mentoring is following up with student goals that were set earlier this year and will be moving into topics related to self-care. There will be a mentors-only meeting where mentors will create self-care bags for the mentees. The Bio Club is encouraging its members to get outside into the fresh air with the weather getting warmer. Members participated in a socially distant cleaning drive by cleaning up areas outside their own homes. In addition, they also went for nature walk slash scavenger hunt and will present their collectibles next week during their remote club meeting. Freshman Activities Committee is in the process of brainstorming some as outdoor spring activities. Another Kahootathon. ESA finished watching a documentary about a transgender Hawaii Mahu and thought, had a discussion regarding cultural norms. They are in the process of discussing other topics they would like to explore. The Drama Club has been working hard studying their original play that is being written by three of their own drama llamas. It's exciting to see their enthusiasm and commitment to the Drama Club. In the coming weeks, they're hoping to be able to announce a remote performance date for their work. The New Club Planning Committee is hard at work coming up with ideas for senior end-of-year activities that will be both fun and safe for a class of 2021 graduates. Some ideas include an alternative to a traditional prom, graduation cap decorating events, outdoor activities, and other unique ways to bring our seniors together. Math Club has once again picked, prepared 480 pies and table talk to give away on Pie Day, which will be celebrated on Monday, March 15th this year. They're also excited to report that they have a few students participating in the March Madness Math Online Competition that will be taking place this Saturday, March 20th, 2021. And in athletics, the Lady Griffin volleyball team saw over 80 student athletes try out this season. The team is expected to be very competitive in the league this year, with a solid nucleus of veterans and young players. The season opener was scheduled for March 16th at home versus rival Lowell Catholic. Griffin football kicked off their season last Friday night against perennial league powerhouse Greater Lawrence. The Griffins battled all night, eventually bringing home a 12-9 victory. The Griffins were led by senior Tr Jacob Trzynski, who accounted for both touchdowns as well as a big interception on defense. Seniors Gabe Rivera and Henry Altenweg led a strong defensive effort, with each contributing several sacks and tackles for losses, helping to keep the Reggies bottled up all evening. The Griffins will travel to Manning Field and Lynn on Saturday afternoon to take on the Panthers of Kip Academy. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Karen. Thank Good you. job. Thank, Thank you. you. And congratulations on your gold medal. Thank you. Okay. Congratulations. Uh, I need a motion to approve the minutes of the February 11th meeting. So moved. Second. Second. Mr. LeMay? Mr. LeMay? Yes. Mr. Giggy? Yes. Mr. Gitch? Yes. Mr. Sheehan? Yes. Mr. Bahu? Yes. Mr. O'Hear? Yes. Mr. Tatius? Yes. Mr. Morin? Yes. Need approval of the minutes of the March 3rd special meeting. Motion. Second. Full approval. Mr. LeMay? Yes. Mr. Giggy? Yes. Mr. Gitchin? Yes. Mr. Sheehan? Yes. Mr. Bahu? Yes. Mr. O'Hear? Yes. 
Mr. Patches? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Uh, report of the treasurer. Move to waive the reading. Second. Mr. LeMay? Yes. Mr. Kiggy? Yes. Mr. Gitchia? Yes. Mr. Sheehan? Yes. Mr. Bahu? Yes. Mr. O'Hare? Yes. Mr. Tatius? Yes. Mr. Morin? Yes. Uh, need to approve the expenditures of four million five hundred ninety six thousand two hundred and eighty two dollars and one cent. Need a motion. So moved. That's it. Yes. Mr. LeMay? Yes. Yes. Mr. Gitchell? Yes. Mr. Sheen? Yes. Mr. Bahu? Yes. Mr. O'Hare? Yes. Mr. Tatius? Yes. Mr. Morin? Yes. Uh, Superintendent's report? Yes. First on the agenda this evening, I would like to inform the committee that Great Old Old Technical High School has been selected to receive two separate Project Lead the Way grants, with the funding being distributed over a two-year period. The first Project Lead the Way grant is in engineering, in total $16,320. This funding will be used for professional development for the engineering instructors and, equ and equipment to enhance the engineering program. The second is the Project Lead the Way Biomedical Science Award, which totals $45,000. This funding will also be used for professional development for the science instructors to be able to become familiar with the biomedical standards and to be able to teach a new course called Principles of Biomedical Science. I'm also pleased to inform the committee that we have been awarded a Growing Literacy Equity grant across the curriculum in the amount of $3,000. This funding will be used to help implement uh, the Literacy Action Team and support literacy across the curricula. And lastly, I would like to inform the committee that Great Old Old Technical High School has been awarded a FAFSA Completion Opportunity Grant of $15,000 to increase the completion of FAFSA and provide access to post-secondary opportunities for our seniors. And, and I'd like to thank our grant writer, uh, Ms. Cheryl Bomo, with the assistance of the teachers and the administrators from those different uh, programs uh, in acquiring these grants. So thank you. Uh, next, I would like to update the committee regarding the recent cybersecurity awareness training program. <clears throat> Excuse me, Greater Low received the 2020 final report card from our recent participation. Uh, and uh, which compares our performance to performances of other participating organizations across the state. And Greater Lowell did, did extremely well in their first round of training in many areas exceeded the state average. And as a result, we have been notified that we have been selected to participate in the next phase of the Competitive Cybersecurity Awareness Grant, which starts this Friday. Uh, and the staff have the opportunity, once they complete the program, to earn 10, PD, 10 PDPs in cybersecurity. <clears throat> Excuse me. The next item is the Cooperative Education Report. Uh, we currently have 107 senior students and 13 junior students participating in our Cooperative Education Program as of today. I know in the report that's included in your packet, the numbers were a little bit different, but I had the opportunity to meet with our cooperative director today, and she indicated uh, that we have 107 uh, senior students and 13 junior students. So this represents 20% of the class of 2021 who is now out on co-op. Uh, Ms. Bazanson continues to do a great job in uh, getting our students out. So I'd like to thank her as well. The next item on the agenda is our uh, technical service catalog, which we are revising. I just need a moment to take a look at the catalog as I speak about it. Uh, the catalog is in your packet, and uh, I'm asking for a vote to revise the catalog to reflect uh, the following changes. 
on page, uh, I think it's a page two of the catalog, uh, keeping the surcharge uh, on tire purchase, I'm sorry, the 20% surcharge to be waived on tire purchases to allow greater opportunities to work with the tire machines and balancing machines for students. Right now, currently with the 20% charge on tires, the price exceeds the cost uh, that it would to uh, do tire changes outside of the school community. So we're not getting as much opportunity for the students to work on those standards. So uh, removing the 20% surcharge would give them the opportunity to perform this sort of service and maybe make uh, the service uh, more appealing for the community to come into the school to, uh, to have some cost savings to, to receive the service. Uh, the next the next change uh, would be in regards to uh, ba balancing tires. There's an increase of 50, 50 cents due to the cost of wheel weights. Uh, computerized four wheel alignment increased by five dollars. The machine technology for the service is updated every six months in order for the equipment to keep up with industry standards. That's why we're asking for an increase in, in that. And tire repair increase from $1.50 to $8 per tire. There is a new industry standard for repairing tires, which includes removing the tire from the rim and the plug is installed from the inside of the tire to the outside, and then the tire is resealed with a new wheel weight and then rebalanced. That's why there is a need to increase the cost for tire repair. And the remaining additions and prices that are added to the, the service catalog under automotive technology are, are new services and new prices that the auto technology department is offering. The next updates are uh, in the area of graphics, if I'm not mistaken, and it's just uh, updating new industry services and maybe some changes in equipment uh, to what we're doing in the area of graphic arts. And in the next area, the preschool program, uh, I'm asking that there'll, there be a rate plan increase uh, by $25 for in-district uh, in district students and an out-of-district increase uh, which is competitive to other child care centers in the community, which range anywhere between $200 and $325. So it's an overall increase to both in-district and out-of-district cost of $25. And we did some cost analysis of other preschools in the area. And as I said, they range from between $200 and $325 for a full week and we thought we would increase our program services by $25, uh, which still, still is a savings from uh, other preschools in the community. And those, those were the changes to our technical program service catalog for the 21-22 school year. And I'm looking for the approval of the catalog. Motion to approve the technical program service catalog. Second. Move, Mr. Chairman. Mr. LeMay? Mr. LeMay? Yes. Mr. Gigi? Yes. yes. Mr. Gitchia? Yes. Mr. Sheehan? Yes. Mr. Bahu? Yes. Mr. O'Hare? Yes. Mr. Tatius? Yes. Mr. Mormon? Yes. Okay, the next item uh, in my report is the memorandum of agreement between the Greater Lowell Technical High School Committee and the Greater Lowell Paraeducator Organization. And this was an MOA to transition uh, back to school. Uh, basically, the MOA outlines our transition to hybrid learning and future transitions moving forward to full in-person learning. Uh, currently, as you know, we are in phase two of our hybrid mode with 100% of our technical students back in school uh, four days for a week. 
The MOA also includes the addition of the buy next now and pool testing that is available to all staff given their uh, consent. Does anyone have any questions regards the, regarding the MOA which is in your packet? Motion approved. Second. Okay. Mr. LeMay? Yes. Mr. Giggy? Yes. Mr. Gitchia? Yes. Mr. Sheehan? Yes. Mr. Bahu? Yes. Mr. Tatsias? Yes. Mr. Morin? Yes. The final item in my report this evening is the memorandum of agreement between the Greater Lowell Technical High School Committee and the Greater Lowell uh, support, Educational Support Staff Unit. Uh, again, this is an MOA which outlines our transition from full remote to hybrid learning and uh, specifically clarifies for them that since there will be in-person learning on Wednesdays, all support staff will now be working from the school building on Wednesdays. It also includes the buy next now and pool testing available to all staff given their consent. Does anyone have any questions? If not, I'm asking for your approval of the memorandum. Motion. Mr. LeMay? Mr. Giggy? Yes. Mr. Gitchia? Yes. Mr. Sheehan? Yes. Mr. Bahu? Yes. Mr. O'Hare? Yes. Mr. Tatsius? Mr. Morin? Yes. And I'd just like to take a moment to thank both the paraeducator organization and the educational support staff units for working collabor collaboratively with, uh, with us to uh, develop this MOA and transition back to to work and in person for for our students and our school community and it's greatly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Report of the business manager. So previous to this meeting, um, actually just about a half hour ago, we wrapped up our public budget hearing for the FY22 uh, budget. Um, and after some discussion, we came to, I think, some consensus that we're in a good spot with uh, the FY22 budget. Um, and now we will just need a motion to approve the FY22 budget of $50,258,546 um, as presented at that public hearing previous to this meeting. I make that a form of a motion. <coughs> Mr. LeMay? Mr. LeMay? Yeah. <coughs> Mr. Gigi? Yes. Mr. Gitchia? Yes. Mr. Sheehan? Yes. Mr. Bahu? Yes. Mr. O'Hare? Yes. Mr. Tatsius? Yes. Yeah. Mr. Mormon? Yes. All right. That's all I have to do. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, old business. New business. It's time for the annual reorganization of committee and election of officers to take effect April 1. We will start with the chairperson. Are there any motions to nominate for chairman? Motion to nominate Mr. Giggy. Second. Second. You all should have received ballots in your, in your packet. You don't have, son, I don't know. You want to make copies? No. Make sure you put it on the right page. Make sure you sign the bottom. Yes. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. 
<clears throat> okay, yeah, it's like Skull and Bones. So it's like the Skull and Bones Society, you know? Mr. LeMay. Mr. LeMay. Yes. Your vote. Yes, Mr. Chairman. I need your vote for chairman. Vote is for Captain Giggy. Thank you. Captain Giggy. Mr. O'Hare. Mr. O'Hare. Yes. Your vote for a chair. Yes. 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 Okay. Is it for Kempton? Yeah. All right, so I have seven for Kempton and one for Mr. Bahu. Yeah. <laughs> what do you vote for himself? No. Yeah. Classic. Classic little people. I, I did not. Yeah, yeah, of course I you did. did. Oh, come on, stop. It's, a, it's right I here. I can see the it's smile documented. underneath your mask. It's documented. Huh? You did. I can see the smile underneath his mask. Uh, I'm still smiling, but I didn't do it. <clears throat> Give me one guess out of the eight who voted, and I figure I win. <laughs> Classic. Okay. That's all eight for Mr. Kiki. Mr. Okay. Kiki. All right. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, uh, next uh, motion to nominate vice chair. Okay. Second. Thank you. Okay. Mr. LeMay? Yes, my, my, my vote is... Okay. My vote is for Fred. Okay. Mr. O'Hare? Mr. O'Hare? Fred Bahu. Okay. Yes, it's Bahu. Bahu. Yahoo. Yahoo. Yeah. All eight for Mr. Bahu? All eight? Okay, congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Okay. Uh, lastly, a uh, motion to nominate the secretary. I'll nominate Reed Gitcher, the secretary. Okay. I'll second it. Okay. Mr. O'Hare. Mr. O'Hare. Hi, uh, Mr. Kitchell. Mr. Kitchell. Okay. okay. Mr. LeMay. Cast my ballot, but we get to you. All right. Congratulations, Mr. Gitcher. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, committee men motions. No motion. Uh, I need approval of the minutes of the February 11th Finance Subcommittee meeting. Second. Okay. Mr. LeMay? Mr. LeMay? Yeah. Mr. Gigi? Yes. Mr. Gitcher? Yeah. Yes. Mr. Sheehan? Yes. Mr. Bahu? Yes. Mr. O'Hare? <coughs> yes. Mr. Tatsias? Yes. Mr. Morin? Yes. I need a motion to enter executive session pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 30A, Section 21. Three, to discuss strategies with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigation position of the public body and the chair 
so declares. Teachers, pre-educators, I need a roll call. Are we going to vote on it? Or is it? I need a mo uh, motion. Second. Mr. LeMay? Yes. Mr. Giggy? Yes. Mr. Gitchia? Yes. Mr. Sheehan? Yes. Mr. Bahu? Yes. Mr. O'Hare? Yes. Mr. Tatius? Yes. Mr. Mormon? Uh, well, any votes need to be taken in open session. That depends upon the discussion if we come back into open session. So, therefore, yeah. we're going to go to an executive session. we we'll take a 10 minute break. Okay, if I could just say one thing. Yes. Mr. Moran, I just want to thank you for being our chairman for the past year. I know that you put a lot of time and effort into it, especially during this COVID crisis that we've all been experiencing and having regular meetings with our superintendent and sharing as much information as you needed to to the school committee and always being there for the school and the students at Greater Lowell Tech. Uh, I just want to commend you and thank you for all your hard work. Thank you, Mr. Bell. Oh, that was Thank well you, said. Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bell. Thanks, Paul. Thank you. I need a motion uh, to approve uh, recommendation by the superintendent. Yeah, motion to come out a second. A motion roll to come call. out a second? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Roll call. roll call. Mr. LeMay? <coughs> yes. Mr. Giggy? Yes. Mr. Gitchia? Yes. Mr. Sheehan? Yes. Mr. Bahu? Yes. Mr. Tatius? Yes. Mr. Morin? Yes. Mm. All right. Yep. What are you doing? Oh. Need okay. the motion? You need the motion? Okay. okay. I'm looking uh, to seek the school committee's approval to provide four days of compensation to the instructional and parent <coughs> educator staff that worked in person with our students with disabilities and English language learners uh, during the pandemic while the entire school community was in full remote learning. We make it in the form of a motion. Second. Second. Mr. Gigi? Yes. Mr. Gitchia? Yes. Mr. Sheehan? Yes. Mr. Bahu? Absolutely. Mr. Tatsius? Yes. Mr. Morin? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Mr. LeMay? Yes. Mr. Gigi? Yes. Mr. Gitchia? Yes. Mr. Sheehan? Yes. Mr. Bahu? Yes. Mr. Ovia? Yes. Mr. Tatsius? Yes. Mr. Morin? Yes. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Mike. We made a little more work for you now. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you. I think I think those individuals are going to be uh, completely.